good evening everyone i on behalf of department of physics tripura university welcome you to the second day of the atol academy sponsored faculty development program on fundamentals of thin film preparation and characterization techniques organized organized by department of physics tripura university today's lecture will be delivered by professor sayed arshad hussain department of physics tripura university the title of his talk will be introduction about different thin film preparation techniques professor s a hussain is working as a professor and head of the department of physics tripura university professor hussain completed his masters and phd from tripura university later he joined the department as assistant professor in 2004 later he completed his postdoc from ku leuven belgium professor hussain has been teaching students for 17 years professor hussain's research interest lies in organoclay hybrid uh is this audible yes audible uh can can you one confirm is it audible Yes, 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 it's audible. Yes, yes. Now you can continue. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. So he joined the department as assistant professor at 2004. Later, he completed his postdoc from KU Leuven, Belgium. Professor Hussain has been teaching students for 17 years. Professor Hussain's research interest lies in organoclay hybrid, FRED-based sensors, biosensors. biomimetic surfaces langmuir films molecular aggregates optical switching resistive switching devices etc total 10 phd scholars were awarded under his supervision he has published more than 140 research articles in the internationally peer reviewed journals he has visited several countries like belgium japan thailand netherlands germany france luxembourg turkey bangladesh and malaysia as a part of collaborative research work and to give invited talks professor hussain backed two patents granted from australian patent house and german patent house he is also granted with various projects funded by dst csir ugc dae etc professor hussain is also working as the editorial board members of several international journals professor hussain was awarded with various prestigious awards such as Jagadish Chandra Bosu Award 2009 by Government of Tripura, India; DST Young Scientist Research Award by Department of Science and Technology, Government of India; Department of Atomic Energy Young Scientist Research Award 2009 to 2012 by Department of Atomic Energy, Government of India; Bharat Jyoti Award by the India International Friendship Society, New Delhi, India; Rashtriya Vidya Samman Puraskar by EGSI, New Delhi, India. This year International Association of Advanced Materials has named his name as IAM fellow in recognition to his contribution towards advancement of materials to global excellence in Stockholm Sweden so with this note i welcome professor hussain to please deliver his lecture good evening am i audible yes, yes sir yes sir okay. thank you so let me share my screen so i guess my screen is visible yes sir visible yes, sir. okay yes sir. Oh, thank you so i welcome you all once again on behalf of the departments of physics tripura university uh to this faculty development program second day uh actually 
giving online talk sometimes difficult because uh, uh, very less interactions in terms of visual effects hardly we can see and speaking in front of machines sometimes it looks odd sometimes even missing the link also and you will continue lecturing and you will know maybe after several minutes but anyway at the same time we have a lot of advantages also so if uh, sometimes i miss the link uh, immediately you please inform uh, so this is uh, my message and then today actually this fdp is on uh, thin films basically we try to design the program so that we can give the uh, participants an overview of thin film science preparation techniques and uh, some characterization and highlighting application also and you know it's a very vast idea there are number of thin film deposition techniques it's difficult to cover all the techniques in one program so we designed this program to highlight some selected deposition techniques based on our expertise as well as uh, within the uh, based on the duration of the program also so today i shall try to give a brief general introduction about uh, three thin film deposition techniques langmuir blocher technique spin coating technique layer by layer self assemble techniques and in other sessions other speaker also will try to highlight some other techniques followed by some characterization techniques and applications so yesterday professor uh, paul he discussed lot about the introduction still let us start little bit with small introduction uh, what is thin films normally we are familiar with different kinds of thin films like say for example in color in walls color in grills or maybe color in your car so these are some kind of thin films we are familiar but in in research and development the thin films we are important this is a kind of two dimensional nano structure and it comes under the purview of nano technology and in general nano technology deals with materials devices having dimensions of the order of say 1 to 100 nanometer yesterday minalda discussed lot about the uh, how thick uh, the thin film is of course there is no specific boundary or defined dimensions with some specific value let us try to find this say to have an idea about nano scale we all know that ki nanometer is a 1 billionth of a meter and normally just to have an idea given idea a girl say 4 feet high if you consider in nanometers this is almost 1.2 billion nanometers then say an ant of length 5 mm if you convert it into nanometer you see this is 5 million nanometer similarly say human hair this is a diameter of the order of 100 micrometer and in nanometer it is 1 lakh nanometer in the same way dna diameter is of the order of 2.5 nanometer and if you put say 10 hydrogen atoms side by side you will see it's close to 1 nanometer so this is just to give an idea about uh, nanometer and in nano technology this is very important confinement of dimensions if you want something to be considered under nano technology 
what you have to do at least you have to confine at least one dimensions or more of physically observable three dimensional objects so that it can be considered under nano for example this is a match box you have length breadth width so what you have to do at least you have to cut down one dimensions if you cut down one dimension then we have two dimensional structure that is maybe thickness is of the order of nano and uh, example is thin films what we are what is the topic this is the topic of our uh, program similarly if you cut down two dimensions you will have a one dimensional structure and this is something like rope or wire and in nanotechnology some examples are nano wire quantum wire nano rods tubes this kind of thing structures similarly if you cut down all three dimensions we say this is a zero dimensional structure and in nanotechnology examples are nanoparticles quantum dots etc now the question is how to achieve this nano dimension how to confine the dimension of uh, physically observable three dimensional objects there are two approach one is top down approach another is bottom up approach so you have a very big bulk three dimensional objects you go on cutting the thing smaller smaller and at some times you will reach to nano dimensions on the other way you have atoms molecules if you join atom by atom or molecule by molecule you and after some point of time you will have your desired nanostructure that means you started with uh, bottom from lower part lower dimension then you slightly reach your desired dimension so based on these two approach there are different techniques top down approach there are some techniques like say uh itching methods using chemical plasma etc these are ball milling these are some some examples of top down approach similarly bottom up approach we will discuss say lemur project technique uh, uh then lbl layer by layer self assembly these are some example of bottom up approach so this is true approach how you can achieve your desired nanostructures now the question is why nanotechnology is so important this is because materials or device of nano dimension so interesting properties than that of large dimension this is important same material same objects show different property compared to the same material only different difference is in its dimension and you will see flip flop of properties that means maybe a material in bulk show paramagnetic property but when you cut down the size maybe it becomes ferromagnetic or sometimes uh, say conducting material may become non conducting or vice versa also metals may behave like semiconductor ductile material can show super plasticity so this kind of change maybe color change also this kind of change in property that is switch switching of properties is possible when you change the dimension from bulk to nano and this is the beauty of nanotechnology so why this thing happened mainly the main reason is delocalization of valence electrons uh, uh, this is something like that in chemistry people say say resonance of pi electrons or maybe uh, uh, say say in quantum mechanics say bonding anti bonding orbital this kind of things and also structure changes with size this is very important and due to these two uh, things you will see changes in properties maybe optical property electrical property melting point specific heat surface reactivity mechanical behavior so many change in proper, uh, properties of the material compared to its bulk this is there and another issue is 
uh, when you cut down the dimension of your material, you will see number of surface atom compared to the total number of atom within the system increases. And this is known as aspect ratio, that is surface area divided by volume. And this is of the order of 3 by R. So say if your radius is 1M, then this ratio is, you see, 3. If this is 1 centimeter, then 300 per meter, then 1 micrometer, you see uh, uh, this value. And in this way, it increases. And if you see in this uh, here, a small uh, three-dimensional object is there. If you cut down here, you will see additional two surface is created in addition to all other previous surfaces. So number of surface atoms increases. And this is very important because surface atoms are more reactive. They have free energy also. So a lot of physical property like melting point, specific heat, this kind of property depends on the surface atoms. So when you change the dimension of your material, the physical or, or some other properties of your material changes compared to the bulk. So this is just an example. We will know that, but still say gold. We all know that gold has golden color, but sometimes this is wrong because gold can have different color based on its size. What the color, golden color we see, this is normally for bulk. Say it can be blue, it can be greenish, yellow, red also, depending on the size as well as shape. Similarly, you see conductivity. If you decrease size, you see uh, gap, uh, band gap increases. So conductivity decreases. You see melting point. If you decrease size, melting point decreases because number of surface atom is higher and they have more energy. So you need very less energy to make this material free. So your melting point decreases. So these are some examples. So from this, we can say that nanotechnology is something where properties of the material are governed by their size. That is, your materials show size-dependent behavior. Now, if we go back to our uh, earlier question then how thick the thin film is since we don't have any number based on the criteria of nanotechnology what we can say that thickness of a thin film should be such that the properties of the materials are affected this may be typically nano to micro of course depending on the material as well as the property you are interested so these two things is important. This nano to micrometer thick films, molecular films are very important because they have lot of commercial practical applications like some examples say display, detector, then electronic circuit components. Nowadays, uh, IC is being used uh, in almost all electronic gadgets and these are something based on thin film technology maybe lithography or some other kind of things then sensors and so many applications are there now we know that thickness of thin films is very small very small means it's of the order of fraction of micrometer and uh, uh, it's uh, if, if we just compare the physical world with naked eye, smallest thing we can see maybe a single human here of the order of say diameter 0.1 millimeter, something like this, or maybe as yes, lice, this kind of insect or something like this. This is say 0.1 millimeter. But if you go down, then we need optical microscope optical microscope again has some limitations then we need special kind of microscope maybe atomic force microscope maybe electron microscope so this kind of machines you need okay so it's it's difficult to handle because you cannot see it with naked eye so it's it's, it's and you cannot touch it also you cannot for example if you want to make a wall using brick you can put 
one by one in a organized way. But here, if you want to make a organized structure of some material, it's difficult. You cannot hold a single particle or atom or molecule or nanostructure and place side by side. It's not possible. So you need special techniques to prepare this kind of thing and also to study, to characterize also, you need special uh, gadgets. Accordingly, there are different kinds of thin film deposition techniques. So last day also, our speaker shared a number of techniques and discuss also some. So I am also uh, uh, showing here some names. There are others also. So some uh, uh, techniques, say spin coating, adsorption from solution, lithography, electro depositions, Langmuir blazer technique, self assembly, sputtering, thermal evaporation. This kind of techniques are there. There are other so many techniques. Each techniques have your advantage as well as disadvantage also. Based on your requirement, based on your material, what you are uh, working with, you have to choose. You have to optimize your techniques and 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 also characterization techniques also. So today we shall try to introduce Langmuir blazer technique and also spin coating techniques and uh, layer by layer self assemble technique. So why Langmuir blazer technique is important? Why we should study? Because using this technique, you can have idea, you can study physics, chemistry, molecular engineering. One can say that this technique is a unique blend of physics, chemistry, molecular engineering. Then you can have an idea about the structure property relationship. That means you can change structure or you can organize your molecule in different control structure at the same time you can correlate the property of the material in different structures so these techniques give you this option also you can organize multi-layer structures with varying layer compositions maybe different materials so you can uh, prepare hybrid kind of structures you can uh, assemble your material or individual molecule into two-dimensional or three-dimensional systems. You can deposit homogeneous monolia over a large area. This is very important. Uh, most probably this is uh, one of the technique which gives you the ability or scope to organize a layer of single molecule thickness this is very important you can organize or a layer where each single molecule will place side by side this is very important then you can control the film structure as well as molecular packing as well as thickness at the molecular level by controlling different parameter during uh, uh, film preparations and the most important thing, whenever you are preparing some thin film or organizing thin films, you have to have some kind of applications. And for applications, you have to place your material or films in a substrate so that you can handle the thing. You can ap uh, uh, apply on device. So this technique gives you the opportunity to organize your material onto almost any kind of solid substrate. Hardly there is any limitation. So this is very important. And there are different trends of LB film research. People are concentrating to study the physics and chemistry of complex systems at reduced dimensions. That is when molecules are organized in lower dimension then how the physical behavior, chemical behavior changes. So one can have idea and people are studying this kind of things. And also study of two-dimensional organizations of prefabricated supermolecular elements. Then deposition of different kinds of monolayer onto top of each other to create a, a desired physical structure 
to have desired property or phenomena so that you can apply to device. One can fabricate some kind of protein, protein lipid mix systems also. And this is one of the very important techniques where one can mimic the biomembrane. In biomembranic membrane, the lipid bilayer structure. So this technique allows us to prepare artificial uh, biomembrane and uh, one can uh, study different uh, uh, phenomena occurring within the biomembrane artificially in the lab and one can have idea key. so for example if drug interacts how drug interacts with the membrane you can artificially make a membrane using lb technique then you put your drug you can study the change of membrane based uh, when it's interact with the drug so this gives you some idea so in this way it's very good technique to apply in biology also then you, one can study mixed monolayer or hetero structure kind of uh, arrangement so main purpose of these studies uh, in some sense to have basic science to explore the basic science involved in the system and the second part is to apply based on the property towards optoelectronic devices this is very important because nowadays uh, uh, you know the evolution of electronics if we think during our uh, 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 long day in, in schools we studied about say vacuum tube triode bulb diode bulb this kind of thing and we term this electronics as vacuum electronics or bulb electronics and that time the size of your single triode bulb diode bulb was of the order of meter then uh, uh, with the uh, invention of semiconductor people started uh, uh, designing transistor diode etc using semiconductor this is known as solid state electronics and the size of the individual device uh, decreases of the order of millimeter then with the development of IC, that is integrate, uh, integrated circuits, uh, again, uh, size of the device decreases of the order of micron or micrometer. And at present, people are using very large scale integration. We say it's VLSI technique, and this is a uh, micrometer uh, dimension and known as microelectronics. And scientists are aiming to, to design single component of the device or basic building block of the electronic gadgets using single molecule. And the electronics, corresponding electronics is termed as molecular electronics. And this could be possible through nanotechnology or, you know, advancements of nanotechnology. And this LB technique is one of the very important technique which gives the scope to apply single molecular layer or single molecule towards electronics applications. Already there are some reports where people reported single molecular uh, diode, single molecular uh, uh, rectifier, this kind of things are there. Possible applications of Langmuller project techniques, uh, organic LED fabrications, then uh, of electro and uh, photochemical devices, then in ICs for solar applications, uh, mimicking uh, biomembrane, then switching networks using multi layers, then optical switching, nonlinear effects, single molecular memory chips, bio and optical sensors. So, so many applications are there. These are listed just to highlight the technique. If somebody is interested, can Google, can search. Also, nowadays, a lot of research, literatures are available. So let us look into the just historical perspective of the technique. Long back, scientists uh, uh, were performing some experiments where oil was spread on the water surface and oil spread throughout the surface. And this experiment is done long back in 1774 or this 18th century this uh, uh, time and scientists said that this was the basis 
of Langmuir project technique. Then, say, Ognis Pockel, she again continues study on this oil film on water, and she uh, 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 concluded that this oil film is single molecule thick. And also she, she tried to control this oil film using barrier. And, and uh, uh, oh, sorry, uh, relay actually gives the idea about the thickness of the oil film. And, and uh, Pokel, she tried to control this film using barrier. Then this man, uh, Irving Langmuir, he did lot of experiments. Uh, following this oil experiments on water surface, she did with extended with other materials. She spread the uh, make the solution of the material spread on the air dry interface and try to develop some kind of theoretical concept or background how the molecule behavior, how the property, how they can be controlled. So this kind of you know rigorous study he did. Accordingly, he was awarded Nobel Prize in 1935. And uh, uh, after uh, some days, his student, this is uh, Catherine Blodgett, she uh, uh, extended the technique and developed the process to transfer this floating layer onto solid support. Accordingly, this technique was named by these two scientists, Langmuir blowjet techniques or uh, simply LB films. So these are some, you know, LB machines you can see. We have also this uh, these machines, some machines. So this is a trough you see in, in, in a Teflon trough filled up with water, similar to these people. You can spread your material there. So we will discuss a little bit in next slides. Then you can spread on the solid support. So how you spread, how the film formed, then how to uh, deposit, we'll discuss a little bit. So in, in Langmuir project technique, typically there are two main steps. One is, first one has to prepare insoluble floating monolayer at air water interface. This is known as Langmuir monolayer. Then this floating film has to be transferred onto solid support or solid subset. This is known as Langmuir Blodgett films. So let us see how this can be done. Before that, you have to know ki which kind of material can be used to prepare uh, a floating layer. You see, this is, uh, uh, I already told you, each and every technique has its advantage as well as disadvantage. So based on the, uh, this Langmuir Blodgett technique also, there are some constraints in terms of structure of the material and one requirement is your material should be water insoluble this is the one requirement that means if you are working with water insoluble material then this technique is very good yeah of course water insoluble uh, material also can be extended with some uh, modification also but this is not the normal case so we so ideally what are insoluble molecules are uh, suitable to prepare thin films using this technique. And this kind of molecules is known as amphiphilic molecules. And they have typically two parts. One is hydrophilic part, which interacts with the water. That means water loving. They may form hydrogen bonds with the water, or maybe they have some heavy functional group so that it deep in, into the water. And then other part, will be water heating part. This is known as hydrophobic part. And this may be typically a long chain. So a typical example may be stearic acid. So this part is hydrophobic. This part is hydrophilic because this part form uh, hydrogen bond into water. And this remains uh, outside. So as a whole, therefore, when you spread this material on the surface, it spread like this. So these are ideally suitable material so uh, uh, you have to prepare your floating uh, film of the material and the surface so in this process what you have to do you have to prepare 
initially solution of your material and then put the solution on the surface this is because if you want to try to put the powder of your material then of course it will be on the bulk or maybe aggregated form that's why you have to make a very dilute solution then you spread the solution from very close to the water surface so choosing solvent is another important issue and normally this solvent should be water insoluble and volatile this is because uh, when you make the solutions if it is water insoluble you put the drop wise your solution on the surface and if it is insoluble so your solution will not uh, uh, dissolve in water and since it is volatile so after some times it will evaporate so only your molecule will remain on the surface and typical examples are chloroform benzene etc they are volatile at the same time water insoluble also so uh, uh, since you are working with uh, uh, molecular dimensions so this uh, it is very important to, to look into the environment because a minute amount of dust may change uh, the properties of your material so you have to install the all the systems in a very clean dust free environment and your surface normally we use water but you know mercury glycerol etc can also be used uh, then you see here it's shown you prepare your material you choose water insoluble material that is amphibolic material you dissolve the material into chloroform or benzene or any water insoluble volatile solvent very dilute solution so that in the solution your molecule remain apart from each other no aggregation is there then with a micro syringe drop by drop from uh, very close to the surface you put on the water surface in the LV trough now when you spread on the surface then of course there are surface tension or surface property is changed and you have to look into this issue also we know uh, uh, this thing in small classes in water you see within the water all molecules are connected through bonding and this is due to cohesive interactions and these tensions are balanced from every side because each side is connected with others but in the surface molecules you see they uh, have some kind of net resultant attractions towards bulk because in the above it's free it's not bonded or connected with other molecules so there is a net resultant attraction or attractive force towards downwards or maybe towards the bulk and this is nothing but your surface tensions or as a whole you can say that this there is a presence of some kind of <clears throat> sorry free energy at the surface and this is known as surface free energy in case of say solid so here also when you spread your solution in the surface your this surface energy or surface tension changes normally in case of pure water the surface tension is of the order of say, 70 71 millimeter per meter something like that so in our lb technique what we do there is a system we measure the surface tension of the uh, uh, clean water surface then we uh, uh, put our uh, spread our solutions and we know that when we add impurity then surface tension decreases here also surface tension decreases uh, we measure the change and this can be this is shown here you see pi is equal is the difference between gamma zero and gamma where gamma zero and gamma are the surface tension of clean water and surface tension in presence of impurity so this difference net value of this difference is noted and also uh, the area of the trough 
where you spread the molecule. This is also known. So you can calculate this area and also the number of molecule you spread. You can have idea from the concentration also. So in LB technique, uh, we measure the area per molecule and this change in surface tensions. And we have a plot and we uh, uh, close the, uh, we decrease the area with a barrier. I will show it. Then area per molecule changes and change in surface pressure also changes. So we measure this kind of, uh, we plot this. This is known as surface pressure area isotherm. And from this, we can have idea about the organization of molecule at air water interface. You can see this is the LV trough. The molecules are sp uh, spread on the surface. And this is the arrangement. Will help me uh, plate arrangement. Uh, this is a say filter paper or copper plate uh, uh, just uh, deep onto the surface. And then it's connected with the balance and it measures the amount deep in the surface and also uh, say when material touched then the buoyancy and also we'll, we'll uh, see it uh, yes here you can see it measures the wet buoyancy and also the surface tensions so this is the net resultant force so in our system also we know this thing how much we dip this plate on the surface so and its dimension also known so you can calculate the force and it can be measured by the uh, uh, instruments because it's connected with the balance here you can see and this area per molecule also can be calculated uh, by knowing the concentration of the material and also total area of the trough so uh, then we plot so this is uh, initially you can see when we spread the dilute solution there is large area of the trough you see the barrier is extended positions so the molecules are large apart it's something like gaseous molecule so we measure the area per molecule which is very large say something here and the interaction between the molecule is very less or maybe force is very less so it's very less then slowly we try to compress this barrier this way here you see then molecules come closer and in uh, it started uh, to exert force or interactions among each other and we say that it's close to liquid and you see the area per molecule is changing decreasing and the interaction force or maybe surface pressure which is nothing but the change in surface tension you see increasing slowly and sometimes you see all the molecules come close to each other they touch each other form a two-dimensional layer of single molecule and it's typically solid kind of thing you see here if you put say pressure on your table you will see your pressure is increasing but the size or area is not changing same thing here also you see pressure increasing but size is not changing but if you go and increasing pressure sometimes it will break here also it's break we say it's collapse so recording this characteristics or analyzing this curve one can have indirectly have idea about the molecular organization in the air water interface depending on the molecules they are as, as well as uh, interaction between the molecules as well as also the alignment of the functional uh, uh, groups of the material there may be different phases say gaseous phase liquid expanded gaseous phase liquid expanded phase liquid condensed liquid expanded so many phases are there based on the molecular tilt so expert can have idea just analyzing this curve about the organization of the molecule at air water interface and at the particular say you want uh, this kind of organization in your solid support say in liquid phase so you can deposit your material in liquid phase you can deposit your material in solid phase so it is it, possible to have different structure or organization in the solid surface also so this is possible so this kind of curve or pressure area isotherm curve is known as two-dimensional maybe fingerprint from where you can have idea about the organization of the 
material. So this is typically a, a, a floating Langmuir monolayer at the outer interface with compact uh, shape. Of course, this is uh, uh, schematic because in real field, so many issues are there. You have to play with the temperature, pH, so many things are there. Anyway, so if you compress further or you try to compress further after when molecules are closed and touching each other, you will see this kind of breaking is there, maybe bilayer formation also there, maybe my cell formation, BC cell formation. And you know, each and every structure, if you uh, or transfer onto solid support, and if you analyze, you see that its optical behavior, its electrical behavior, everything is different. So you can play with this structure, you can play with the property based on your requirement. This is interesting. So this is again schematic shown. You see, this is the uh, filter paper or, or uh, copper plate dipped into the, uh, uh, through the floating layer. And this measure, uh, this is connected with the balance. So this is Wilhelm arrangement. This is simply to measure the surface tensions. And this is the actual machines. You see, this is the trough. We spread the material here, and this wire is connected uh, with the this uh, 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 paper, and it's dipped just uh, uh, across the surface. And this barrier you can control using this uh, computer. Everything is computer controlled because if you try to compress using hand, a minute jerk can uh, change the property, can change the organizations. Uh, so you have to be very careful. Maybe this compression of the order of maybe one millimeter per minute, one millimeter per five minutes, something like this. Very slowly, very minutely, you have to do it. There are so many factors which governs the monolayer phase behavior. That means organization of your material at air interface. Uh, of course, Van der Waals interaction is there. These are very short range, and this is proportional to the number of carbon atoms. Uh, uh, in your hydrocarbon chains, and it depends on the uh, bondings or, or or structure of your material. And of course, there are electrostatic interactions like ion-ion, ion-dipole, dipole-dipole, and of course, pH of the surface, temperature of the surface play a big role in the organization. So in real case, when you are trying to organize your material, you have to play with these kind of uh, parameters to, and of course, you can yield different kinds of structure also. So there are a lot of flexibility, lot of scope to play with the organization of your material and indirectly to play with the property of your material. This is very interesting. So the two-dimensional crystalline arrangement of molecules at air order interface, what uh, we, I discussed is known as Langmuir films. Then when we transfer it onto solid support, and this is mandatory to apply it uh, uh, in device or practical applications, you have to transfer the same thing into some solid support so, so that you can apply. So once you transfer, this is known as Langmuir Blodgett Films. So let us see how we transfer. Since we are now uh, want to transfer the floating layer, we need the substates where we want to transfer. So already I told you, almost any kind of substrate one can use maybe glass, quartz, aluminum, ITO, silicon, gold, silver, whatever may be. Of course, depending on your requirement. For example, if you want to study, the, the, say, your uh, say visible spectroscopy, you can transfer onto a simple glass. If you want to study UVB's uh, property or UV spectroscopy, you have to uh, transfer onto quartz because glass uh, disturb the UV. Similarly, if you want to study the electrical behavior, you have to use ITO, FTO, or some 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 substrate which has conductivity because you want to use as an electrode. So, if you want to see your uh, structure using AFM, then you have to transfer it onto a very smooth surface, maybe silicon or something like this, because minute roughness on the surface will affect the uh, roughness of the film also. So, so uh, you have to choose as per your requirement, as per your application also.
so once you are uh, you are ready to deposit there are different types of deposition techniques this is known as y type x type z type this is nothing but based on the organization of material so how you will transfer simply we will uh, once we have uh, uh, the lenmur floated floating film in the surface we will dip a the substrate across the film or maybe before spreading we may uh, immerse the substrate uh, partially or uh, uh, the portion of the substrate we want to put below the water surface then we spread the material we prepare the film and, and we take out the substrate just as shown in this, this schematic you see you take out your material will stick then again if you dip you see single layer is uh, uh, is, is sticking so normally uh, this this uh, spherical part is your hydrophilic part this is hydrophobic so based on the arrangement if say uh, arrangement is say hydro, uh, hydrophilic part interact with the substrate then you see interaction is hydrophobic hydrophobic hydrophilic hydrophilic in case of multilayer structure if you organize in such a way that your organization of layers is like this then we say this is y type that means here interaction is similar hydrophilic hydrophilic or hydrophobic hydrophobic if your organization is like this say this is hydrophilic with the subset then hydrophobic hydrophilic hydrophobic hydrophilic this way this is x type and just uh, just reverse of the x type this is known as z type and of course you can mix also this you see interaction bit uh, like this also this is also possible this is known as super lattice that means you can play with the organizations you have the options and uh, uh, mind it based on this organizations or 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 depositions property of your same material changes because the alignment the organization dipole orientation this kind of changes with this organization so you see your property of the material is changing and it may be interesting based on your requirement so one can play this kind of things so these are some schematic of three type of deposited films uh, again there are another techniques where this is known as Schiffer method this is or horizontal deposition this is just extension of langmuir blodgett technique here substrate horizontally you just uh, uh, touch the floating film you see here here and uh, take out you see your um, uh, films attached here but of course it it is very tricky you have to be very careful you have to take help of your machines because if you want to try using your hand you don't know when you are touching or maybe minute vibration everything will change so oh, you have to be uh, extreme careful uh, one thing is uh, one parameter this is known as transfer ratio this is very important this gives you idea key how much material from the aerator interface transferred onto your solid support and this is the ratio of the area uh, uh, decreased in the floating layer and the area put it in the substrate and this ratio should be ideally one if it is ideally one that means the amount of area decreased in the, the surface that is floating and the amount deposited same that means same uh, 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 is deposited on the substrate so uh, one value is very good but in real case of course there should be there may be some variations so here you see one one cartoon showing the deposition process uh, uh, so initially what we do we make the uh, solution then we spread you see this is there then we uh, compress using barrier you see the molecules are coming close by close and you see the isotherm pressure increasing so it's a compact langmuir layer then we take out the substrate so that 
it turns fat on to solid support. You see? So you uh, have transferred your uh, or system on the solid support. Okay. So this is very uh, 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 simple technique, but of course, extreme care is required because you are dealing with molecules, molecular dimensions. So let me give you an example. We all know uh, uh, the floating planes as shown in this cartoon. So this is there in your pond. We can compress these plants, water plants, using bamboo. So they will come closer when you compress. Sometimes they will touch each other. So they will form a compact layer. This is very similar to the Langmuir film. If you further compress, then what will happen? You will see some plant will slide uh, uh, above the uh, bamboo or slide down the bamboo or maybe some plants will slide upon each other. Okay, so this is something like collapse of the uh, floating layer. So once you have your Langmuir film, then how you deposit? Then again, let me give you an example. We all know that when we heat the milk, we see cream form on the uh, upper surface of the container. If you dip a spoon and take out, you will see your cream layer stick on the spoon. Here also same thing happened. But of course, I already told you this is molecular level, lot of parameters you have to be optimized. Say uh, there are lot of uh, uh, important issues, say charge of the substrates. There may be interactions, say, electrostatic interactions, there may be vulnerable interactions, ion ion interactions, so many issues, a minute jar, uh, a pH, temperature, anything can change. So you have to play, you have to optimize all these kind of things. Okay. But in principle, this is very easy. And uh, ideally, one can prepare a single molecule thick layer using this technique also. So once the film are formed, there are several techniques which you can use to characterize first during the formations you can analyze the pressure area isotherm already i have explained and this gives you idea about the interaction uh, among the floating molecule among the organizations at the aerator interface at the same time you can apply brewster angle microscopy uh, uh, then fluorescence imaging microscopy to have idea about the organization at the floating layer then once you transfer your film you can apply different spectroscopic technique like absorption spectroscopy fluorescence spectroscopy ftir nmr so many techniques are there then you can apply xrd to have idea about the arrangement of the lattice then you uh, can uh, use different microscopic technique like afm sam tam etc so this kind of techniques based on your requirement, based on your applications, you can use. You can use electrical characterization also if you want to make devices using your LB films. So we are in our lab, we are also uh, doing some uh, electrical characterization for memory uh, designing memory devices. So I will show one or two examples at the end. So these are some uh, uh, examples you can prepare two different uh, two layers with two different materials then maybe this kind of organization then single layer this multi layer so this is just an idea that it's possible so uh, this is the uh, end of um, first part of my lecture then uh, uh, i shall uh, start discussion on spin coating we will interact at the end and uh, this this uh, you if you have any question or doubt you can um, ask or in, we can discuss okay so uh, let us discuss on spin coating technique uh, this is a very robust and uh, easy technique and this uh, technique is based on the centripetal force you 
spread the solution on the substrate you spin you rotate your substrate due to centripetal force the solution spread solvent evaporate and you have your films and this is very robust and a lot of applications because it, it mainly here films are say fraction of micrometer, micrometer to micrometer thick uh, in earlier case lb technique it's possible to prepare one molecule thick but here it's difficult okay so uh, but uh, since our present electronics is dealing with microelectronics this technique is very good to prepare uh, thick, uh, thin films of the order of micro meter uh, thickness uh, no, uh, spin coating was started long back mainly uh, during coating of paints and uh, say of the, uh, in the year 1958 or something like this this by uh, this man later people systematically extended this technique using other desired material initially by applying coating because uh, nowadays also in, in in painting in walls we have seen earlier we were using brush but now they have used different techniques some rolling kind of things some spraying so so many modifications are there so that time people tried say something spinning maybe surface to coat the surface in a better way and this gives the idea of uh, spin coating technique and now it's a well established technique people used in research and development and of course in in in, in industry also so this is a uh, simple device you have a chamber uh, uh, you see inside the chamber you can put your substrate where you want to deposit here and then it rotates but since due to rotation the substrate may slip or fall that's why it's uh, 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 connected with a vacuum pump it will uh, uh, suck the substrate so that it stick here during rotation and and do not fall then you spread so this is a, a figure of the your machine here you see your uh, uh, substrate is uh, uh, put here and it's chuck with a vacuum pump then uh, you put your material there then you put the lead to make it free from dust etc then you spin and centripetal force is responsible for this spread of the liquid across the wafer you can see you rotate it's spread and slowly your uh, solvent evaporates okay by uh, uh, con uh, putting different drops time to time you can play with the thickness but here only you can play with concentration of the solution or amount of solution spread and the speed and time of spinning these things you can play okay uh, so here again steps you deposit then accelerate your wafer then your material will spread you see here then solvent evaporates and you, uh, you will have your desired thin films so there is a uh, uh, video explaining the process Homark's spin coating unit is a dedicated tabletop device to spin coat small substrates up to 100 millimeters in diameter. The device is compact with all electronics built into a single unit, resulting in minimized footprint. The devices use a friendly keyboard and LCD display for programming various parameters. Spin duration. Spin speed and acceleration can be easily programmed from the front panel keyboard. The device is equipped with a Teflon bowl into which the substrate to be coated is placed. The substrate is held in place using vacuum. The spin head is provided with vacuum chucks for this purpose. 
A solution inlet is provided to inject the coating solution into the chamber. A transparent cover protects the surroundings by keeping the spin-off solution inside the chamber. Extra vacuum chucks of different sizes are also provided along with the unit. All components in the equipment. So, <clears throat> so this is a very simple technique and uh, very equipment is also very cheap maybe around 40,000 or 30,000 something like this Indian company also producing these machines and uh, it's very easy to procure and very easy to use also so a lot of industrial use of spin coating because this is very good for preparing uh, micrometer dimension of uh, thick film so people are using uh, uh, circuits in wafer that means ICs sometimes using this then CD DVD anti-reflection coating televisions this kind of applications are there there are some uh, uh, defects also during uh, thin film preparation using these techniques uh, maybe bubbles on the surface of the coated film you can see here and this is uh, when you spin your material, uh, if there is uh, uh, during deposition, there is bubble or a year within that drop, then this may be there. At the same time, you may have pattern also. And this is very uh, important because you have to spread your solution at just at the center. If you just uh, put or uh, drop wise your material away from the center then the uh, uh, spreading will not be uniform there may be some pattern and also you have to play with the speed because when you say want uh, a particular say 2000 rotation per minute something or maybe 6000 rotation per minute once you start it will take some time to reach so this acceleration is very important. It may affect. So you have to play with this kind of things. Also, spinning time is very important. Uh, so you have to play with these uh, uh, parameters, spinning time, then acceleration, then concentration, deposition, during deposition, you have to be careful. There should not be air bubble to have uniform thick film because uh, always we want uniform thick film for uh, uh, good uh, uh, properties also there may be say mark like this and uh, this may be if if your uh, vacuum pump chunk due to this you know it's 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 pulling the the, the thing downwards so this may also affect during spinning when the centripetal force uh, uh, spread the materials outward this may affect the spreading also so this is you have to be careful about this also okay then again there may be streaks like this uh, this may be uh, due to again speed as well as uh, deposition deposition at the in the side of the substrate so this kind of things are there okay and also maybe uh, if you spread before you know uh, spinning or maybe uh, it, when it reached the highest speed this is very important so spinning uh, spreading time when you are spreading this is also important so you have to play with this kind of thing to have a good uniform uh, film also there may be uh, uncoated areas because if you spread very little amount then there will be uncoated area also there may be air bubble and particle also this may be if your substrate is contaminated so you have to be careful 
and in in you know surface science always we have to be very careful because we are dealing with molecules uh we are playing with lower dimension so cleanliness is very important we have to work in a clean room or very clean dust free environment although uh, uh most of the labs we don't have clean room because sometimes it costly also but anyway we have to be careful about this okay so this is in short uh, some idea about the spin coating technique then uh, layer by layer deposition techniques this is another very simple techniques very uh, uh, low cost and robust techniques without any use of any machines only by using two three beakers one can uh, uh, use this technique it's very cheap and low cost also so it was uh, say started long back by a uh, scientist named Hello, you are not audible, sir. Technique, and he used the material of opposite, oppositely charged material. Because he is a low molecular weight organic material. So, so many materials. Uh, are applied using this technique to organize them in a desired malleolar structure after a year's work it took long time to uh, make this technique family uh, uh, famous or popular and this was done by uh, uh, Decher and Hong they published a, a good work in in science in 1997 and this is fuzzy nano assemblies toward layered polymeric multi-composites he he used he applied this technique to prepare the uh, nano assemblies using polymeric material to prepare multi-composite systematically and this work popularized the technique and after that across the globe throughout the world scientists started using this technique and till today lot of uh, uh, research groups are using and it has lot of commercial application also already so the basis of lbl uh, technique is it's it's mainly based on uh, 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 alternative interaction between uh, uh, charge material that is electrostatic interactions play a major role other than this there are some other interactions like hydrogen bonding maybe some step by step interactions between the material and of course molecular recognition and bio recognition also they, they play an important role during this lbl self assembly formation this is very easy because you don't need any sophisticated uh, equipments to prepare uh, uh, multi layers or your desired uh, films using these techniques only only beakers containing your solutions and the substrates this is enough so substrates may be very clean hydrophilic surface like glass silica mica but of course, you have to be careful that since the technique is based on the electrostatic interactions between oppositely charged system, so your substrate should be non-zero uh, with non-zero surface charge. That means your should be charged surface. This is important. Okay. Uh, uh, this technique mainly uh, mainly uh, uh, gives two solutions. Okay. One is 
uh, allow you to modify the sub surface engineering of the interactions of a given object with its environment because here you you make the environment or or, or, or play with the environment of the system so that the molecule self assembly automatically interact with the substrate or each other this is very important then you are preparing a, a, a multi-material assembly that means different kind of material because it's based on the interactions of different materials having different charge this is important so you are playing with the uh, multi-material assemblies or you are having some kind of uh, 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 pattern structure with different charge materials and it has lot of applications like anti-corrosions anti-reflective coating uh, uh, then sensors implants uh, then uh, micro reactors so many applications are there and already there are uh, some commercial several commercial products based on these techniques are there in the market so i will show you some examples okay so this process i told you based on the electrostatic interaction between the oppositely charged material so what you have to do you have to choose your substrate so that it is charged then maybe positive or negative say maybe a glass so this is positive charge so what you do you take your solution of a suitable material you want to uh, deposit or make the layer of your material it may be negative charge so make the solution here you dip simply your substrate on the solution wet sometimes allow them to interact so molecules will self-assemble through electrostatic interactions or ion ion interactions on the substrate surface then you take out your substrate then you wait for drying then you dip the substrate with the film on the water to wash out the surplus excess ions which are not interacted with the substrate but they are just sticking so it will wash away then your substrate which was initially maybe positive charge now with interactions or maybe absorption of negative charge material now the as a whole substrate surface is negative so then you dip it into positively charged material solutions okay or maybe cationic charge so then again it will interact with the uh, negatively charged uh, surface so here it is shown in the second step so you will have a layer of two materials and as a whole your system is now again uh, uh, positive charge so again you take out you dry you wash to wash uh, to dip into water uh, to wash out the surplus atom so you repeat the whole process so in this way you can have your desired multilayer structure so you can uh, 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 the flexibility is there you can deposit a number of materials just by, uh, by dip, uh, dipping your uh, substrate with film in different uh, solutions of course you have to optimize the uh, uh, the ionic nature charge this is important okay so only using some beakers and uh, the uh, material of course you need if you want to put a specific material you need the thing then the substrate it's so it's very cheap you don't need any sophisticated equipment so substrates you can choose lot of different variety of substrates say uh, metal quartz silicon wafer silica mica carbon then uh, polymeric substrate like polystyrene pet uh, then uh, duped ito uh, fto so so many variety of substrate based on your requirement based on your characterizations based on your material you want to coat you can choose okay so it's it's, it's give you a wide options with ease of preparations okay only thing you have to dip the amount of area you want to coat this is the requirement 
and of course you have to choose the material and the substrate in a suitable or optimized manner so that it interacts and uh, self assemble this is important so you will have a structure like this you see initially it was positive then you are negatively charged so this this image is taken from this the chart paper from science you see this blue is negatively charged so as a whole your system is negatively charged then you wash uh, to to wash off the surplus ion then again you dip it into the cationic material you see this is now as a whole it's cation so you have a better structure of two different polymers and by repeating the process you can have multi layer and also by changing uh, 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 this uh, number of material can be deposited so it's possible now people uh, uh, also tried with you see spraying but in 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 the process we described you have to deep you have to wait some time okay and you can you have to optimize the time on average say 15 minute 20 minutes something like this you can optimize it how say you deep you wait in one minute you take out you measure say maybe absorption spectra then again you deep you take out after five minutes you measure the absorption spectra you will see the absorbance increasing uh, and you if you go on increasing the deposition time you will see sometimes after sometimes there will be a particular time after that the absorption will not increase that means all the uh, the positive charge of the substrate surface have been neutralized or or, or interacted with the uh, the material you want to cook so no further interaction is there so you can have idea about the time also so you have to play with this but normally you need several minutes for this but people have you know tried with, uh, with, with just modifying that technique how you see here what they did they spray the material they want to cook and it's they say it's few seconds per layer so they spray one material at a time then other material then other so in this way they can have the heterostructure but they say it's 50 to 100 times faster than the earlier systems but of course the organization's structure uh, is different in each cases so and also property is also different okay so it's interesting to play with this process by varying this kind of you know parameters so there is a uh, 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 simple video to have idea about the process. So this is Hello the, uh, the with, with, with the machines. We have also, but what you see here by hand also you can deep. Unit. Homark's dip coating unit is designed to keep user involvement as minimum as possible by allowing different process parameters like speed, duration, etc. to be regulated accurately by automated control. Movements of the dip coating unit are achieved by employing a precision servo motor controlled linear stage. This provides the unit with vibration free dipping and withdrawing action. The system provides a user-friendly front panel with keyboard for manual mode operation and along with an LCD display. The user can set dip parameters such as dip duration, dip speed, withdrawal speed, number of dips, etc. using the front panel keyboard. The unit can also be used in PC mode where the same parameters can be regulated using a computer connected to the device. So you see, you can dip, then you wait sometimes to interaction, interaction the to complete, the then you take out, so on this well way, scale. you deposit. a microprocessor-based system, along with user-friendly.
Hello, we are here to introduce Homark's Silla coating system. You see, it, it, it's a more sophisticated system. Homark's with a number of system has been designed material to can be made. You chemical see, technique it will dip once here, where sometimes then take reaction. out, dry, short then again Silla. come here. So in this way, alternately, it's possible to dip. The unit is enclosed in a cabinet made of clear acrylic sheet to protect the process from external disturbances. It provides four separate platforms to place coating solutions, each with a magnetic stirrer and hot plate. The unit is also provided with four heating platforms with independent temperature controls. This enables us to set different temperatures for each of the four heating platforms. The temperature can be set up to 200 degrees Celsius from ambient. The unit provides a user-friendly front panel with keyboard and LCD display to enter all process parameters such as dip speed, dip duration, length of travel, number of dips, etc. We can also set different values at each of the four beakers as required of the process. We can also control RPM of the magnetic stirrers for each beaker independently. The Silar technique involves multiple dipping of the substrate in a given solution and dry. Okay, so uh, in India also, Indian company, they developed the process system uh, with uh, less than one lakh rupees. It's a microprocessor based systems, maybe around 80,000 or something like this. So it's, it's available by Apex. Okay, and of course, without machine also, I told already, just using Bicar, this is possible. So as a whole, this LBL technique is analogous to chemical reactions, where reagents atoms, molecules, what uh, a series of reaction step is there and we reach the final products. Okay, typically a single species or something like this. And in, in LBL deposition technique, what we do, our, uh, we, we want to have a surface with multi-layer film, having defined layer sequence, how? series of deposition steps here series of reaction steps with different you know source material and here uh, a series of deposition steps uh, uh, within different uh, material solutions of course based on the requirement or desire okay so it's analogous to to a reaction systems and this is of the order of nano to micro scale So, a lot of different kinds of material, polymer, colloid, biomolecules, small molecules like uh, uh, organic material, organic molecules, dyes, etc. Uh, uh, can be tried and already uh, people tested numerous material using this uh, LBL technique to prepare their films. Okay. So the main advantage is this technique is extremely cheap. No expensive instrument is required. Of course, there are instruments and maybe with instruments, you know, uh, your, uh, your uh, efficiency may be better. But without equipment also possible, we also did a lot of, you know, work before procurement of the equipment. We have the equipment at this moment. And we have seen the result was very good. We published the work in very good quality journals, uh, preparing uh, using only Bicars and subjects. Okay, and uh, they they uh, give very good you know results. So fabrication process is very simple, and it's 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 possible to uh, have multi-layer structures either manually or by machines. Okay. Uh, the film uh, uh, can be formed not only a planar substrate. You see, in spin coating or LB technique, normally we used planar substrate. But here 
you can put on on bands of set also different shapes maybe a, 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 a cup can be put at cup type of subject or or maybe something uh, carved surface only thing the part you want to put you have to dip on the uh, uh, material okay so this is very interesting you can coat your material on substrate having any almost any kind of shapes this is very important okay and and the thickness per layer is self regulating that means you don't need to do anything it will automatically you know after interaction somewhere it will stop when you dip a positively charged substrate on your negatively charged solution then interaction initially interaction will start your uh, negatively charged material will go close contact with the positively charged surface and sometimes will come when your all the positive charges are connected with the negatively charged material so there is no free positive charge so interaction is over and this is self regulatory so thickness is most of the time similar so this is very interesting then different types of functional group material you can uh, deposit maybe two type three type four type five type you can have heterostructures this is very interesting and of course based on this you will see the property of your uh, or uh the deposited layer changed so this is very interesting so these are some examples say nanoparticles assembled on two thin films using lbl technique you see your substrate then if your nanoparticle is positively charged you have to coat the substrate with some negatively charged material then nanoparticle so it is positively again the negatively charged material then again in this way you can have your desired multi layer heterostructure so you see these are some examples you see uh it is a very old one you see you go on depositing certain kind of material and after each deposition if you measure the absorption spectra you see with number of layer absorbance increases linearly that means your deposition is uniform almost increasing linearly so this is uh, what you can have idea about the deposition so uh, this technique has been used to to uh, design contact lens this company excellence they design contact lens using lbl technique and they marketed it in long back you see 2002 so this is a real commercial applications then you see tailored bio interfaces so you have your biomaterial surface so based on your requirement you can tailor specific material to specific target places for example if you are playing with your biomembrane your lipid molecule are zwitterionic so if you want to oh, say attach uh, some nanoparticle in the cation so you can choose some negatively charged nanoparticle you dip into the lipid layer automatically it will target the cations so in this way you can have tailored bio interface to manipulate the property of the surface so this kind of things are there so lot of work are going on you see this is another uh, you know commercial applications uh, you see uh, this is by uh, japanese company they prepare a sheet using lbl technique to wrap the fruit and this is very common in 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 big shops or abroad you will see your each fruit is covered with, with because uh, when you import or export this, the fruits it takes long time so it is important to preserve the quality of the food or food value so they developed a coating which can wrap the fruit and it 
can preserve the property of the fruit for a long time. This is there. Again, you see, this is another example where metal rubber, they name it. Nanosonic Inc. Company, they develop this one. Normally, rubber is not conducting, but it is conducting. But at the same time, you see its mechanical property 10 MPA. It's metal like, like liquid con conductivity, but mechanical behavior is like rubber. So it can have a lot of applications. Okay. So this is there. Uh, this technique has a lot of application uh, uh, advantages with other techniques, say LB spin coating because this can give you an uh, opportunity to integrate different kinds of material in an ease manner. You can choose your component, maybe biomolecule, maybe polymer, maybe colloid, maybe different kind of things. Okay, You can choose your surface, you can choose your solvent, you can make your design pattern. So this kind of uh, uh, flexibility is there. Okay. But people sometimes say that okay, this technique takes some time because if you dip your substrate, you have to allow some time so that interactions completed. So this is there. And you see, of course, this is old, but you see number of papers linearly increases with ER using LVL technique. So this is very interesting. So uh, we discussed three techniques. LB, spin coating, LBL, each technique has its own advantage, disadvantage. Based on the requirement, we have to use those who will attend physically in this faculty development program. We will demonstrate these three techniques because we have all the three techniques, uh, machines in our lab and we, we uh, use these techniques sometimes based on our requirement. So now, uh, I am almost end part of the talk and I will share some of examples from our lab based on these uh, techniques. So you see here I am showing uh, uh, one material. This is a imidazole derivative. It's an organic molecule. Uh, this material is designed by my friend from chemistry departments. You see when we use Langmuir project technique, to deposit this material onto the solute support, you see it forms organic nano -oya. You see this is a single nano -oya. and and uh, diameter is of the order of say uh, 100 nanometer. You see, same material when we try to deposit using spin coating, you see structure is different. And interestingly, we have observed that the property of this structure and this structure is different, although this is from same material. Here also you see, we prepare bundle of this nano -air. And here you see, I am showing the IV characteristics of the uh, this uh, material imidazole derivative prepared using, device prepared using three different techniques. One is spin coated, one is cast film, one is LB technique. You see, in spin coated and cast film, you see from very beginning, it was showing linear behavior. There is ohmic behavior with conductive uh, behavior. But when we prepare the devices with LB technique, initially, it's you see very high resistance. There is current is very low. That means off. But after certain voltage, say 1.56, it switches from off state to on state. So it gives the idea that okay, this material, when you assemble onto LB films, give the opportunity to use it in switching device, electrical switching. And later we apply this material to design memory uh, uh, device also. So it's already published. Then we, we uh, design some sensors, uh, volatile organic compound, gasoline, gasoline adulteration. You know, you know nowadays, uh, cost of gasoline petrol is very high. So sometimes people mix kerosene with this to, to make profit. So we designed a sensor. It's like litmus paper. If you put in gasoline in front of gasoline and in front of gasoline mixed with kerosene, 
it will it can differentiate these two by changing different colors and one can have idea about quantify also okay and al already we have patent also this kind of colorimetric sensors then we design sensor to to have idea about the pollution level in the car exhaust nowadays we go take our car to different pollution check levels they measure the pollution level of our car but we have designed systems uh, by which we can have idea about the pollution level in the car exhaust we also designed alcohol sensors also so this is the the thin films based sensor we, we designed so normally it's it's you see blue we apply this in 12 different volatile compounds at different times and with different concentration you see color changes and based on this change you can have idea and for quantification what we did from this images we take the rgb value we analyzed before and after exposure and we have seen that this changes linearly with time so from this we can have idea about the amount of you know uh, uh, analytes we apply the sensor to the pollution uh, to have idea about the pollution present in the car exhaust here you see in 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 uh, five seconds then 10 seconds you see color changes so from color change we try to correlate with with this you see we we uh, measure the pollution level from the standard uh, pollution uh, control or, or pollution check shops and then we, we analyze the contaminant present in the uh, uh, exhaust and you see we plotted the amount as the uh, rgb values and we have seen that it's almost linear so our color change can quantify the amount of contaminants presents in the pollution level of the car uh, we design uh, uh, thin films and and which can be uh, we propose this can be used for secret writing so what we did we designed a sensor this is based on a a pyridinium derivative and then clay material okay so clay material have uh, our layer structure and they can swell when you make it wet so we prepare the uh, film using this two material then we write simply using a hearing bud deep within dmso right here to you then when we observe with naked eye we see nothing is there you see in this bottom image but Am I audible? Yes, now audible, sir. Okay. How long it, it stopped? I didn't know. It's long time? Yes, sir. 
Okay. For okay. more. On, only two minutes. Okay, okay. Two, three minutes. Two, three minutes like this. Okay, okay, okay. There's the problem of, uh, you know, uh, online system is difficult to have idea. So my screen is visible? Yes. Okay. So again, we, we designed uh, uh, some kind of, you know, thin films using clay uh, polydiacetylene material. And we designed uh, a, a LQL sensor using these thin films. Initially, the film is blue. When we put it in front of a drunk person uh, who consumed alcohol, and if he give puff on the film, you see the color changes. Okay, so based on this color change, one can have idea whether the person is drunk or not. So it is something like litmus paper kind of thing. And here you see the change of you know structures uh, observed before you know exposure to the alcohol, and this is after. You see the color changes, organization changes. And due to this organization change, color changes. And the main thing is, you see, normally in market, available alcohol sensor, this is mainly conductivity based. Where you will have a, uh, a material which will expose uh, the alcohol and the conductivity changes. And what you do, you need a battery. It's connected with the battery. You pass a current using this battery and you measure for this you need an emitter and it's calibrate when you expose it alcohol resistivity or conductivity changes and you with this change you can have idea about the amount of alcohol consumption so it's costly but in our case it's a simple piece of paper kind of thing only just observing color change you can have idea and for quantification you have to take an image using maybe mobile and we have a software if you put the uh, image there it will give you tell you the amount or concentration of uh, you know alcohol you consumed so this is there then again uh, uh, we have designed some uh, you know memory devices using thin films and these are transient uh, rom memory device where you can uh, based on the change of the resistance of the material where you can write your information and once you write your information, it can store or sustain information for a long time. It can retain. Transient electronics is very important and coming up. Where what you do, you you say you want to use an electronic component for a certain time period. And after that, you want to dispose it. Normally, if you want to do this, it will generate e waste. But in transient electronics, you will use material in such a way that your electronic device will dissolve in certain, you know, environment friendly solvents. So in our case, we have uh, observed that uh, this memory device, uh, you can dissolve it uh, in water in few minutes. Okay, so this is very good. And this kind of transient, you know, device is good for implantable device in future. And here we use a biocompatible material. This is a protein. And we have seen that uh, a, a, a ROM devices can be prepared using this. And you see this is the device structure. This is a glass substrate. This is the ITO. And this is our protamine film. And the thickness is of the order of 100 uh, nanometer. And then again, electrode. Okay. And interestingly, you see, we once we have uh, uh, written the data within the device in terms of say change in resistance we have observed that the device stored the information for long time in real case we measured up to more than 250 days or something like this then we extrapolate even we switch off the power, still it remains in uh, uh, one state. Then we extrapolate with some software and we have observed that it can retain data up to 10 years. And this value is good in terms of practical applications. And at the same time, once the data is retained, we try to read it because if you have a memory, you have uh, input some data, you have to read it again and again. 
So we have tried to do that and we have seen that at least 30, 36,000 times one can read the stored information. So we did this already. This is uh, reported and uh, published. And this is the transient behavior. You can see in eight minutes, the whole device dissolved in water. And uh, you know, for colorimetric sensor, what we designed based on the clay and organic systems, it's already patented. Then this is another patent for designing random access memory using organic material indole derivative. Only yesterday I, I, I came to know that this is granted. So this is another uh, patent. And recently we collaborated with Photonics India from uh, Bangalore. It's a company and uh, uh, we got a project from Advanced Manufacturing Technology of DST uh, through which uh, we develop, we will develop some memory devices as well as sensors. And this company will try to design the prototype and commercialize the thing. So works is going on in this direction. Already also we have designed arsenic sensor, ion sensor, some DNA sensor, then cholesterol sensors, pH sensor, etc. So this is, we have done. So with this, uh, I have almost finished. And uh, for detailed information about uh, our lab and work, you can visit this link. Also, uh, my email is there. So you can email or you can contact. So now uh, we can discuss a little bit. If you have an query or any suggestions, you can uh, give. Okay, or you can put in the chat box somewhere. So if, if you have any questions or suggestions or discussions, you can uh, put in the chat box or you can unmute and you can directly, uh, you know, raise your points. Okay, so I see uh, uh, what are the factors influencing the film thickness in spin coating method. Yeah, spin coating, you know, uh, you spread your molecule, you spin or rotate your substance. So there are only few factors. One thing is fast concentration and amount of your material you put on the substrate this is there then the speed of rotation this is also important and uh, you know the duration of rotation so this kind these things you can control the speed of rotation the time of rotation the amount as well as concentration of your material you Put. So the, by, you know, optimizing these parameters, you can uh, play with the thickness. So this is there. So for example, if you want to make very dilute, you know, uh, sorry, very thin films, you have to have very dilute solutions. And also you have to put small amount, but you have to be careful because you need uh, 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 spread throughout the substrate. So this is important so as a whole you have to optimize these points then you can have what i understand what should we do so that material will not waste during uh, spin coating yeah so 
I, I told you that you have uh, this kind of, uh, you know, uh, parameters, speed, then concentration, then say time of rotations. So you have to optimize this kind of thing. And also substrate surface may play important role because if your material is not interacting well, then there may be uh, uh, possibility that key your material may slide down so viscosity of the solvent may also play a role so you have to optimize this kind of thing so that your material is will not waste during your uh, you know film uh, preparation can we get uniform thickness using uh, spin booting method yeah it, it, it's it's possible but the control is many times less compared to the langmuir project technique in langmuir project technique you can you know in principle deposit one molecule thick layer at a time then maybe another molecule then maybe another molecule and you have lot of parameters to optimize for example maybe during compression how much close your material should be by barrier you can play with this during deposition also at different pressure so so many options are there but here you have option is very less but if you optimize with your uh, material the speed concentration substrate time of rotation this kind of thing then of course you can have but it's a trial and error method. You, can, you have to do it. So in this way, you can have, I think. Yeah, we will share the PPT. Don't worry, we will share. Can we measure conductivity of our thin film without depositing it over an ITO layer? Yeah, it's 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 also possible. Uh, then what you have to do in in glass substrate also you can dip. Then uh, you have to touch your your uh, two probes uh, upon the film. Okay, so it's something like say you are measuring the resistance of a of a resistor or maybe OR something like this. So in two sides, you put your two at a particular distance, you can place. Okay, so it is conductivity across the surface. But if you want to make a device, so you need say bottom electrode, then your film, then top electrode. Okay, so there are different types of structure. And of course, people are now playing with this kind of things. They are using different kinds of material in between the electrodes and this gives different device structure different device property also so it is possible without conductive material it's possible in the recent day which deposition method is considered as most effective and precise method no uh, actually it depends which deposition method is precise it depends upon your work, your material, your application, what you want to do. For example, say you want to study the biomembrane artificially in your lab. Then you have to prepare, uh, use language project technique because this is the only technique 
where you can make a biomembrane artificially. Then you can study the property of your biomembrane, say maybe interaction with drug, how its mechanical behavior, how its uh, say flexibility, compressibility, fluidity changes. You can do this kind of thing using LP technique, using spin coating technique, using vacuum deposition technique, using any technique, it's, it's hardly possible. So this is there. So for example, if you want to deposit a metal coating, you cannot use Langlois technique. You may use vacuum deposition technique. You may use sputtering. You may use other techniques. So it depends what you want. Okay. So if if in your technique you need certain thick films, so mainly for electric device application, mainly people use spin coating, because now our electronic is microelectronics, and this technique is very cheap also because you can have a spin cutter with say less than fifty thousand. Okay. So so it, it depends. For example, if you are playing with, say, uh, say uh, oppositely charged material, then you can use self-assembled method also, only using some bicar. This is also possible. So it depends uh, which method is precise for your application. It depends on your nature of applications, your material property, etc. So it depends. Yeah. Listen, between viscosity of the liquid and atmosphere. yes of of course viscosity and uh, uh, rotation is important because viscosity uh, gives you know, the idea about the interaction of the substrate surface and the molecule of your uh, or solution so based on this you have to optimize the speed as well as amount of time how long you have to do it so this is there so you have to play with this Okay, so what we can do, uh, I, I will, okay, is there any questions? No. So I am here for every day, so we can discuss, no problem. You can email me also, even before or after talks by other professor also, you can ask me, no problem, we can discuss. And those who will attend physically, what we will do, we will demonstrate this three te technique in our lab. It's, it's, we will demonstrate these three techniques then uh, uh, some spectroscopic characterizations then uh, fsm we will try to demonstrate then some uh, say uh, memory device fabrication using uh, organic material something like this we shall try okay so then also we can discuss this kind of thing So maybe we, we stop or, or so we shall uh, join tomorrow at uh, tomorrow at seven o'clock and tomorrow uh, Dr. Bishojit from NIT Agartala, he will be speaking on vacuum system and its application with reference to the sputtering technique of thin film preparations. So I request all of you to please join on time. Okay. So with this, let us conclude this sessions. Thank you very much for your patience and, and cooperations. Good night. So, uh,
uh, I would like to thank Professor Hussain for his wonderful talk about the different thin film preparation techniques. Hopefully, we'll be having a maximum of you in our physical mode uh, program. Then uh, we'll demonstrate all these three techniques to you um, such that you can have a better idea how things work. So with this note, uh, I shall conclude the session and we'll meet tomorrow again at 7 p.m. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Dr. Vishwajit Shaha from NIT Agartala will deliver his speech. So thank you. Good night. We'll meet tomorrow.